I promise you have way more in your control than you realize, but you're choosing to not look at it because once you look at it and go, this is the list in my control, you're now held accountable to that list. Because if you don't do it, guess whose fault that is? It's yours. So when you take inventory over what's in your control and what's not, you're taking massive amounts of ownership. So if you don't execute, it's your fault. And guess what? That sucks. But that's how we make crazy changes and change our life. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. I'm your host, as always, Jared Hamilton, and I think my voice is about back to normal. Uh, man, if you were here for the last episode, uh, I may have sounded quite a bit different. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know what it is. The past like week and a half, my voice has been shot. So I think we're about 95% of the way back. So I'm hoping to be sounding a little bit more normal. But nonetheless, we are here, and I appreciate you being here for the show. If you have not yet subscribed yet to the show, be sure and do that. It means a lot, and I don't want you to miss out on any of the cool stuff coming down the pipeline for you. Um, today is a, is a little bit different of an episode. I know we've been cranking a lot of guest episodes lately, but this is a solo episode because I've, I've noticed something. Um, this is, I'm going to, what I'm going to show you in today's episode is what I'm calling the all season plan. Because at the end of the day, if you are not able to make progress and move forward in all seasons of your life, good, the bad, the uncertain, the crazy, the unpredictable, then you just won't make it. So today I'm going to actually give you my all season plan. This is some like client secret shit and some other cool stuff for you. So that's what we're going to get into in today's episode. Now, before we do all of that and before uh, I pull back the curtain, so to speak, we do have a, a big thank you to the sponsors of the show. Sponsor number one, Flex Pro Meals. You guys know I love my Flex Pros. Um, I get people asking me uh, quite a bit anymore about um, like if I actually like them, like, like that's, what's funny is it just shows you how fucked up the sponsorship world is in the fitness industry where it's like, well, do you actually like those? Or you just say you do cause they're paying you, but no, in all seriousness, I love flex pro. Um, I, to be honest, I try to travel with them, especially when I can, like I was just in, like I mentioned on the last episode, I was just in St. Louis. Um, I took a whole bunch of them with me there. I'm about to have a, a few trips coming up here soon. So I'm hoping I can get them in a carry on on a flight. I'm not sure if they will let me in or not, but either way, way, Flex Pro is such a staple in my day to day because I don't know about you. This feeds very well into the all season plan, but when it comes to making progress and navigating life, it can be really difficult with things that are not uh, normal things where times are crazy and chaotic and stressful and uncertain and all these things. Well, the last thing you need to be like really worrying and thinking about is your meals, right? I don't want you to have to be freaking out and worrying about all the stuff and spending extra money at drive throughs or going to here or there, or popping into gas stations all the time. Sorry, if you can see me on the video, I'm trying to adjust the fan above me. I'm trying to set it to a lower setting, but, um, uh, and if you're not on the YouTube for when I say the video, um, you should definitely go check on the YouTube where we have all the podcast episodes at. But as I was, as I was saying, when it comes to your, 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 your day to day with food, because that's what we know is with fat loss and all the goals that you have, nutrition is the, is arguably one of the biggest components. But if you're all over the place running around from soccer game to kids dance practice, to overtime, to school, to work, and you just find yourself living in drive throughs and gas stations a lot, well, that's going to impede results a lot. Um, so with Flex Pro, it not only helps save you money because it's cheaper than going through a drive through but it puts the things back in your control. You know what the macros are. You know what the calories are. It gets you on the offense for times like this. And just having them in your fridge all the time for when you need them is just super game-changing, at least for me. So if that's kind of your cup of tea, definitely go check them out either at flexpromeals.com or hit the link below. But if you're into saving money, you should use my code Hamilton Trained, and it'll save you 20% at checkout. So big thank you to them for being a longtime supporter. Um, sponsor number two is first form. I actually don't have on any, any first form apparel today. Um, this is my Arate shirt, but anyway, first form, uh, guys, you, you know, you know, the story is uh, when it comes to the supplement world, supplements are not the end all be all. They are meant to fill gaps you are missing with food. So if you're doing everything right, if you're, you know, your, your inflammation is low, you're getting all your fruits and vegetables every single day. If you're hitting your protein, if your recovery is top notch, if you're sleeping well, your stress management is good excuse me, um, you're all good to go. Well, then you probably don't need them. But for most people, that's not the case. For most people, they struggle with a lot of those areas and those areas just are not getting filled with food. So that's where we do lean into supplementation. So if you are in that world, I would highly suggest looking into what first form's got going on because the other dangerous part of the world is in the supplement world is it's extremely unregulated. Most people are just going to Amazon trying to find what's cheapest and tastefully shitty. Um, and 
a lot of those companies are made in someone's basement or um, they're not as accurate on the label, so to speak, or they're using questionable ingredients or they're resourcing uh, the, the, the product in the cheapest, not so great manner possible. So at the end of the day, I want to make sure your money is going to places that are actually giving you the products that they're promising that are actually giving you the right quality. So that's why we work with first form. Uh, and it's been the, uh, the dopest partnership ever. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely go check out the link below. Um, when it comes to the first form stuff, there is, um, there is a, uh, a free shipping. Uh, if you spend over $75, there is a free shipping option down there, but otherwise let's get into the rest of the show on the all season plan. So before we get into the all season plan, the very first thing I want you to really understand is what I'm calling the all season mindset, because here's the truth. Uh, uh, when it comes to the all season plan, I've got you when it comes to the tactics, the strategy, the, uh, the game plan on how to dominate and crush and just get amazing results in every walk of life there is. We do this with clients every single day. We build our clients their own all season plans. One of the biggest reasons people apply for coaching. But here's the thing, because of how the mind works, because of how psychology works, if you do not have what I'm calling the all season mindset, none of the tactics and strategies will work ever. Because here's the truth, your mind, your headspace, it's why we call the podcast dieting from the inside out is because you have to get the inner game up here taken care of first. It's, it's almost as if like, imagine your kids going to school and they are just determined it's going to be the worst day ever. They're like, nope, today's terrible. It's going to be a horrible day. He could literally like get win the lottery and it would still be shitty, or he may not see that opportunity to win the lottery or whatever the case is. If we, our minds are fixed on one thing, it's really hard to get another outcome. And it's like the old saying goes, a closed mind is one of the most expensive things you can own. Well, the sad truth is if you do not have an all season mindset where you are determined and commit to, and just ultimately decide to making progress in all seasons of your life, nothing else will matter strategy wise. I can literally give you the blueprint, but if you do not have it in your head that you are going to make progress in all seasons, it's just not going to happen. I, I talk about this in the reticular activating um, episode of the, of the show way back that I did, I think last year, early this year, that um, it, it's your reticular activating system. It's part of your subconscious mind where it it's showing you deep, deep down, um, and subconsciously your brain or your, your, your RAS is showing you what's most important to you or what you spend most of the amount of your thought process on. So if you're dead set on, um, you, it's impossible to make pr progress or get results in, in hard seasons or rough seasons, the weekends or life or vacations or whatever, uh, your, your brain's going to shield you from any opportunity. It's kind of like the, that, um, the concept of when you get a new car, um, once you get a new car, you see it everywhere. And then as soon as you sell it and buy another car, you now see that car everywhere. It's the same thing with this all season mindset stuff in the all season opportunities and, and things like that. Because if you are, if you've already made the decision, you're, you're going to make progress in all seasons. Your brain is now opening subconsciously all these areas where it's going to show you where in all seasons you can make progress at. But if you don't have that all season mindset and you are in a place where you're a victim or you make excuses, you're like, oh, it's, I always struggle with the weekends or, oh, you know, no one makes progress through the holidays or, you know what, life is crazy right now. Um, school is crazy. Work is crazy. And you start making excuses, your brain will go, okay, we'll just show them that. And it will hide the opportunities from you to make progress in all seasons. It's, it's no different. Like I just, you got a lot of you guys know, I just bought one of my dream cars. Um, I used to drive a Camaro and I would see Camaros everywhere, but I, uh, I just got rid of my Camaro and I bought, um, one of those newer mid-engine Corvettes. They look like Lamborghinis, but they're a Corvette. Um, I just bought one of those. I see those everywhere now. I don't hardly ever see Camaros anymore. It's not that there's any more or less, it's not that like there's any more Corvettes on the road and less Camaros on the road, but my mind is now trained unconsciously to see more Corvettes because that's what I own now. And it doesn't see as, in, as many uh, Camaros. Well, if you're, if you have the all season mindset where you're, where you have decided and you have con convicted yourself and you're like, I'm going to make progress in all seasons. I'm going to crush in all seasons. It doesn't matter what life throws at me. I'm going to find a way to make it work your brain will open up a space and it will find the resources, the plan, whatever. But if you make excuses and you believe in your heart that you're just like, man, there's no way to do it. I just can't. I've never been able to. This sucks. I, life is out to get me, whatever the case is. And you're just a victim about it. You could have every opportunity in front of you to make progress, but your brain will hide it from you. So the all season mindset 
is something that you are having to decide right now. Like I pause this episode if you need to. The all season mindset is deciding right now that you can and will and are going to make progress no matter what, no matter what's going on. You are going to make progress or at least stop regress no matter what life throws at you. Okay. Now, if you're watching the video of this, you're going to see my eyes drifting a little bit because um, I have my notes, but there's a very specific thing I'm pulling my notes from that I'm going to offer you access to completely for free. We'll just say I made something that if you, well, I'm not going to get into it till the end of the episode. So you're gonna have to stick around to the whole thing to see what I'm talking about. But there's a thing I made that you're going to want. I'm like, I said, I won't tell you what it is until the end of the episode um, that you'll see me pulling my notes from. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around at the end because the only way you can get access to this is with the instructions at the end of the show. So um, let me just throw that out there. Now, um, so now that we got the all season mindset, you've decided that you can and will make progress in all seasons of your life. Okay. Now let's get into this. Cause I have, I have, this is a little bit of fuller of an episode. So, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to have these different scenarios, which throws most people off, but I'm going to give you the different uh, options, ideas, and ways to go about it, strategies, tactics to, to be able to make, uh, progress in every season of your life. Okay. I have this dis- uh, dissected into a lot of, if you want to call it chapters. So I'm going to pack this full and we're going to go through it. Pr- I'm going to try to go through it pretty quickly. So um, cause here, here's the truth. How I came up with this is, uh, I think it's important to talk about. So I came up with this, the all, this all season plan idea was number one. I, when we have these interviews with potential clients, cause basically when someone wants to work with us, we don't work with just anyone with a credit card. We, I basically me or my team interview you, you have an application call that way I can make sure that we're a good fit. Cause if I don't think we're a good fit, if I don't think you're ready, if I don't think that we can completely 180 your entire life and we're not going to accept you into coaching. We don't accept, like I said, everyone with a credit card. But one of the things that throughout all these client, these potential client interviews when people are applying for coaching that I've found is that so many people just need what I, it's, it's organically come out of my mouth where in these conversations, with these amazing people, it comes down. I go, man, it, it just sounds like you need the all season plan. Cause so many people that I have these talks with that, that have turned into clients they're saying like, man, I, I do great until the weekend hits or man, I do, do, do great. Things are going well until vacation season or holiday season, or the girls want to go get brunch or I go out to drink with the, with the friends and family or a uh, stress hits until chaos hits until the weekend hits. And so to me, it, that just sounds like, man, you just need the all season plan. You need a plan that is doable in all walks of life. Think about it. Would you want to get on a plane with a pilot who can't fly through a storm? Probably not. Would you want to get on a cruise ship where the captain has never seen rough waters? Probably not. Because here's the truth. The biggest mistake people make when they're trying to transform their, their, their body, their mind, whatever you want to call it, and change their life, lose the weight, whatever, most people say, well, I don't want to get started until things chill out, until life slows down, until you know, holiday season's over, whatever. Here's the thing. I get why you feel like that naturally, but that's the worst thing you could ever do. Waiting is the worst thing you could ever do. We see people all all the time. They go, well, that sounds good, but I don't want to commit to anything or or do anything until I can be all in. The problem is when you're not all in, the opposite is you're all out. And very rarely in life can we be all in. Life is nothing but a giant hodgepodge of gray areas. And it's one of those things where um, when it comes to this, if you're waiting until life slows down, stressful times go away, the, the travel schedule gets better, vacation gets done. The issue is if you wait till then, what's going to happen when it gets busy again? Like remove the emotion for a second. Logically take a step back and ask yourself, how often is life chill, smooth, relaxed, and easy? What, maybe 10% of the time, 20% max? The majority of our lives are stressful, chaotic, uncertain, uh, unprecedented, unexpected craziness, Right. Well, if that's the majority of your life, wouldn't it make sense to have a plan that you can execute and make results happen when that's the majority of your life? That's what makes sense to my logical brain. But the problem is most people go, no, I don't want to do anything until I can be all in or until life slows down. Well, here's the hard truth. If you are waiting until life slows down, whatever the fuck that means, you are basically saying once it speeds back up again or gets crazy again, you're going to quit. Think about that. If you are saying to yourself, man, I don't want to start this plan, the program, the diet, the coach, the whatever, until X is over, vacation's over, holiday season's over, life is better, things slow down, work chills out. 
Well, you know, it's going to get busy after that. So you're going to wait till it slows down. If you were to get started when it chills out for like the month, it might, you're basically committing right now that you're going to quit fall off as soon as life gets hectic again. Well, that doesn't sound very good to me. That sounds like you're living the ultimate roller coaster with results. I don't, I don't know about you. That's not how I'd like to live. I would rather have a way to get results that I'm able to manage it in all walks of life. Cause the truth is if you can get your results and hold and keep them, especially when life is crazy, you'll be good for life. I, we tell clients all the time when they're going through unprecedented times where life is crazy, chaotic, scheduling's crazy, travel's crazy, whatever. We tell them this is like the gold mine for them because we can lean into this and give them the skills and the tactics and strategies to be able to navigate the rough waters. So now they can go through life and never struggle ever again. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what I'm going to get into here with the all season plan. I just wanted to uh, preface it well. So, sorry, I should have had a water up here with me um, while I'm while I'm podcasting, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's get into the all season plan because I know I keep rambling. So right out the gate, number one is out to eat. How to make progress when you go out to eat a lot? Well, number one. It's a balance because if you're going out to eat every single day, it's going to make things hard. Um, but also that's really fucking expensive. So I actually have four different approaches that we teach clients in a lot of cases on how to handle going out to eat. So number one, option number one with going out to eat is do your research beforehand. Um, a lot of, this isn't a foolproof one, but a lot of times for the majority of times, let's say 90% of the time before you go out to eat, just hop on Google and research the restaurant you're going to and pick the thing you're going to eat like the, whatever, look at the calories, the macros, whatever you're doing and make your decision way before you get to the restaurant. Most people know where they're going to eat at. So one of the easiest ways to do this is if you know, you're going out to date night tonight, or you're going out to dinner with friends, just hop online and look at their menu, their calories and make your decision there. That fits it within your plan. Easy. Now you may say, well, Jared, I, uh, I don't know, or the place we're going is a mom and pop hole in the wall. I don't know what they don't have their calories listed. Well, the cool thing is there are these cool things called competitors. So if you go to this little hole in the wall burger joint in the middle of San Diego, well, that's fine. But there's a big chain called in and out or five guys or Burger King. Well, it's not going to be perfect, but it at least gets you in the ballpark. If you normally get the two patty cheeseburger from hole in the wall, San Diego restaurant, well, why don't you just go to fiveguys.com and see what their two patty burger with cheese runs calorie wise. Well, there, boom, done easy. So that's one way to do it. Second way is um, that we teach a lot of clients is the um, take half to go method. So here's the cool part. Um, I personally, if I'm going out to eat, I don't, yeah, I mean, if I'm tracking, if I'm in a phase of tracking calories, it's one thing. But a lot of times, one of the things that I do personally is I just won't eat all of my food and I'll take it to go. Um, so what's funny is ironically, at the time of recording this, this is my wife and my anniversary. So we just had um, a day date just like an hour ago. And we went to our, one of our favorite hibachi slash sushi restaurants. Well, they come out with these ungodly sized portions. And right now I'm like slowly trying to just lose a little bit more weight. So I'm trying to dial my, my own portions back. So I just don't, didn't eat all my food. So one of my favorite things to do for clients is order whatever you normally get at the restaurant. Don't get the salad that you don't want. Don't ask for, you know, a burger without the bun or whatever bullshit order, whatever the fuck you normally want, the pasta, the burger, the pizza, whatever. But when you order your food, order it with a to-go container. And then your server is going to bring you, let's say the burger and fries and the to-go container. I want you to take like half your order, throw in the to-go container, sit it aside, then smash what's left on your plate. And there's your calorie deficit. And now you have a snack for later. Cause let's be real. If you force feed yourself the whole meal, now you're still going to have a snack later. So why not just take half your meal, put it into a to-go container, eat the other half. That way you're not feeling restricted at all. It's the same food. Now you have a snack for later and there's your calorie deficit. Boom. Okay. Number three under going out to eat. Um, this is this one you got to be careful with. Um, just budget for more calories. So don't this is where people go wrong is they take this one to an extreme. Most people who are like going out to eat tonight, they will restrict, restrict or fast all day to conserve calories for tonight. Don't go that far with it. You can budget your calories where if you know you're going to go out to eat and have way more calories tonight, you can eat a little bit more conservatively or eat a little bit less than you normally would. So you have more calories for later. That's one of the options. What I don't want you to do is 
try to bank your calories and you're trying to restrict and starve and fast all day so you can have a calorie bomb tonight. The problem is you'll go into your dinner hungry as fuck and you'll binge eat and it won't matter the calories you budgeted. So what I'm saying is don't go to an extreme and fast restrict or don't hardly eat all day so you can have a calorie bomb tonight. I'm saying is one thing you can do is just maybe, um, budget your calories a little bit better. So you have more to deal with tonight. Don't do go to an extreme, but you can budget them a little better. Okay. And number four, um, this is a big, this is a big one. Um, don't throw out the entire day week or weekend for one or two meals off. The truth is when it comes to going out to eat, most people, it wasn't the meal that fucked them. It was everything else they did around the meal. Most people that I know that struggle with this, they'll have one or two meals. They'll go get brunch with the girls or they'll go get lunch with the family or whatever the case is. And because they had lunch out to eat on a Friday afternoon, they say, fuck it for the entire weekend. Or because you went and let's say got breakfast with your mom and then dinner with your girls it's easy to go, oh, my diet's ruined, fuck it. And you binge Saturday, all day Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, and because you're going to start over Monday. You're, you're getting all upset about one meal, two meals max. Or I see so many people, they'll do it on like a Wednesday. They'll go get, you know, their friend from out of town came, came to town and they went to the local Mexican restaurant, had some drinks or some chips and salsa. And it was on a Wednesday. They go, oh, my week's ruined. And they binge eat the rest of the, the, the day or the rest of the week. Well, don't do that shit. Treat it as what it is, a meal. Just stop. I mean, worst case scenario, just stop when you're full, back on track like nothing happened. But don't throw out the entire day, week, or weekend for one or two meals off, okay? So that is your all-season plan for going out to eat. Do one of those four, and you'll never miss a, miss a beat. Next, <coughs> excuse me, vacation. This one is super simple. We have this conversation with clients all the time. So here's how to make progress every single time on vacation. Well, number one, you're never going to get make or lose results on vacation. Most people take a four to seven day vacation. Um, I don't know very many people at all that take a two, three, four or five week vacation, um, where you're there for a really long time, but your average vacation is four to seven days. You need to go and enjoy your vacation. You should not be calorie tracking. You should not be dieting. You should be enjoying your experiences with your family and friends on your, or by yourself even on vacation. You should not be trying to diet um, or anything like that. Now, with that being said, for vacations, the way that we teach clients, don't make it a free for all either. Because if you if you're going into vacation with free for all vibes, that tells me you're restricting too much when you're not on vacation, when you were leading up to vacation, you're like getting rid of bread and you're not going out to eat, not drinking wine or whatever. But when going on vacation, don't let it go to free for all vibes. Here's the, here's your, uh, your vacation anthem. All right. No counting calories, no tracking, no nothing. Here's what your vacation anthem. Eat when you're hungry. Stop when you get full. Go back when you're hungry again. That's it. How simple is that? Eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, go back when you're hungry again. Because again, it's vacation. It's not that big of a deal. You're, you're, it's not your norm. You are going to be back in the swing of things like you do for your job as soon as you get back back on whatever day you get back from vacation from. But that's it. When, you get st- when you're hungry, ooh, I should probably eat. Eat when you're hungry. As soon as you get full, stop. Stop when you get full. Even if there's food left on your plate, don't force feed yourself. Don't be like, oh, I'm wasting food and force yourself to eat it. Stop when you're full. And then guess what? Go eat more when you're hungry again. Done. That's it. That is how to conquer vacation. Don't, st- the, if you're spending your vacation stressing about food, stressing about progress, stressing about, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I'm going to be so far off when I get back. You're wrong. Number one. And number two, you are being enslaved by the one thing you thought you wanted, which is fat loss. You decided to get in shape, change your life because you thought it would make your life better, healthier, live longer, happier, all those things. But don't let this become the biggest impediment or obstacle of your happiness. You're literally on vacation with your friends, family, or by yourself making memories, um, having experiences and enjoying your time to relax from home and from work. Do not cloud it with now getting anxious and stressed out about diet stuff. Eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, go back when you're hungry again. That's it. Okay. The problem is most people are addicted to their stress and chaos. And when you go on vacation, you have none of that because work is back home. So you bring it with you in the only thing that you can, which is dieting. Don't do that. Okay. Next all season plan weekend edition. All right. The weekend edition. Here's, here's the thing. Number one is one of the, the best things you can do for the weekends is go back to the section where I talked about going out to eat. 
Okay. Going out because that's the thing most people on the weekends, they go out to eat a lot. So use the adage. So there's two parts to the weekends. Number one is um, from a tactical standpoint, I want you to go back. If you're on the, for the weekend stuff, go back to the going out to eat part of this, this podcast. Cause again, that's where most people lose it. Now, um, there's, there's a, a little bit more philosophical side to this with the weekends that we teach clients. Okay. Cause again, like I said, most people ruin there where they lose it on the weekends is because they let one or two meals off plan. If you will. Well, that's the problem also is if your plan doesn't account for going out to eat and being a normal fucking human, then you're on the wrong plan. This is why our clients crush. This is why our clients have no anxiety around this stuff and they kill it. Um, so if your plan doesn't account for that and you view going out to eat as off plan, well, then you're on the wrong diet. Okay. But the weekends you have, so from a tactical standpoint, go back to the, the going out to eat part of this. Now from a, a little bit more philosophical standpoint, so number one is stop treating the weekends with a, uh, that are basically stop treating weekends differently than the rest of the week. Stop treating weekends differently than the rest of the week. Sorry, my getting all tongue tied today. Um, this means no fuck it vibes. This means no, uh, I'll start over Monday vibes. This means no free for all vibes. But the problem is everyone who struggles has a different energy with the different days of the week. For example, Monday through Friday, people are in their oh, soldier mode, rigid. All right, back on track. No fun. <laughs> diet on my diet. No cheats. No. Do, 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 do. And they're like, got a stick shoved up their ass. That's their Monday through Friday. <clears throat> Well, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's no wonder they're party girl vibes like, woo, free for all, fuck it, start over Monday, oh my gosh, I deserve this cheat day, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's no wonder any uh, progress you made during the week, you just lost it all on the weekend because you keep on the, going on this giant pendulum of over-restriction, over-indulge, uh, uh, restrict, restrict, binge, binge. It's the same thing. The problem is, I, it's, I've said it for years, every day should be Wednesday. Everyone loves Wednesday. Wednesday doesn't have the Monday burr vibes, but it doesn't have the fuck it Friday vibes. Every day is Wednesday. That should be your anthem. Okay. So that's the first one. The more the philosophical side of the weekends, stop treating them like they're anything different. Every day of the week should be treated the same. You need to ease up your restriction and crazy rigidness on Monday because you're going to get serious, but you do that every fucking weekend or I'm sorry, every fucking week. So stop that. Stop being so strict and rigid during the week. And then stop being such a free for all on the weekends. Okay. Number two, the reason you're struggling so much with the weekend and falling off um, is because you're too strict during the week. That, that's literally the biggest thing is we, that's why they call it the restrict binge cycle is because the reason you're binging is because you're restricting. But the reason you're restricting is because you went too hard on like the, say the weekend. So that's the biggest, that's like step one is stop going to the weekends with fuck it vibes quit treating them like any other day of the week. But then on the beginning, number two is on the beginning side of the week, the Monday through Friday, stop being so restrictive. Stop being so rigid. Stop being so like in line with a stick shoved up your ass where you're like, never, never. It's like, stop, stop doing that because that's what's causing you to lose your shit on the weekends. It's, it's, I mean, it's no wonder, like if, if you at work worked for, I don't know, three weeks straight, 12 hour days, of course, you're going to crash on the other side of that. Because everything balances itself out. So if you go hardcore restricted, you're going to end in a hardcore free-for-all binge. If you work really, 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 really hard with no rest, you're going to crash on the other side. Things naturally balance themselves out, friends. So it's no different here. So if you're going really restricted, really rigid, you are going to lose your shit every single weekend. That's why we have to break the pattern because it keeps feeding itself. The restriction feeds the binge. The, the binge feeds the restriction. Lather, rinse, repeat. Okay. Then number three, um, sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. Um, stop saying fuck it Monday as soon as Friday hits. This kind of is number one a little bit for the weekends. Stop saying fuck it as soon as uh, Friday hits. Because here's the thing, the, the other tactics that I'm going to show you in this, uh, this, this episode is, is going to help you make better decisions during the week. So rest assured on that. But the third part of the weekends is stop saying, fuck it, I'll start over Monday. Because when you say, I'm an all or nothing person, I'm gonna start over Monday. You say, fuck it, I'm gonna start over Monday. What's gonna happen is you're leading, this is leading to uh, what we call the last supper mentality. Because you're so restricted and so rigid, it's, it's like you're not allowed to have pizza. So on the weekends, you're like, oh, I'm having pizza. Fuck, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna get started back I'm going to get started back on Monday, which I'm not going to, I'm not allowed to have pizza. So I don't know when I'm going to have pizza again. So I'm going to eat all the fucking pizza in the, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Stop that. Have pizza on Monday. 
literally everyone should just have a slice of pizza or two on a Monday. But do you see what I'm saying? This is why you're struggling with the weekends. Number one is because you don't know how to, like our, on the uh, on the tactical side, you're not going out to eat with the right strategy. So we already talked about that. But then these three philosophical reasons. Number one is because you're going into the weekends with a, uh, a free-for-all fuck it vibe. Number two is you're restricting too much during the week, which is causing the weekends to go batshit crazy. Then number three, you keep saying fuck it too much. As soon as your plan gets thrown off just a little bit, you're like, oh, fuck it. Start over Monday. Stop. Okay. Next, all season plan drinks edition, alcohol. Here's the thing. You should not be drinking that much if we're being real. Um, if you're a daily drinker, uh, you got to stop that shit. Sorry, I hate to break it to you, but um, you drinking really consistently is going to fuck with all sorts of results. Can you have alcohol in moderation? Yes. But drinking every single day, every single night, like four, five, six times, seven times a week, it's going to fuck up results, right? Just honest to God. And let's be honest, if you're needing to drink that much, we may need to have a different conversation. That's not what this episode's about, but um, you should not, but but generally speaking, you're going to have a really hard time getting to your goals if you are drinking that consistently. So I'm just going to throw that out there. But can you drink in moderation and still lose weight and get to where you want to be? Absolutely. So I have one, two, three, four little hacks with drinking. Number one, pick a low calorie drink. Literally, like I'm not the alcohol expert. I don't I don't drink a whole lot just because I'm a basic bougie bitch and I have to be in like a really weird mood to want to drink. But with that being said, there's a calorie friendly version of every single drink there is. You can go straight spirits. You can do like uh, <clears throat> I'm a I, I enjoy a whiskey coke for myself, but I order a whiskey diet coke. Or you can get um, like if you're a margarita person, you can order skinny margs. Like there are so many things you can do to just get lower calorie cocktails, lower calorie drinks. You don't have to go um, have these like crazy high sugar, high, um, high calorie drinks all the time. Those are also going to make your hangovers worse and give you a headache. But just number one, easiest way to do is just pick a lower calorie drink. Okay. Drink uh, all season plain drink condition. Number two, um, match one drink with one to two waters. So I know it's not very exciting, but instead of if you're, let's say you go out and, or you're with some friends, you're at a party, whatever, let's say you would normally have five drinks. Well, you're not allowed to go get drink number two, two till you have the equivalent of drink number one in a water. So let's say you're a beer person instead of drinking five beers straight. And if you're a beer person, that's easy to do one beer, one water. That was the same size of that beer. Now you can go get beer number two, beer number two, before you can have beer number three, you have to have water number two. Whatever it is, if you're a wine person, same thing, glass of wine, glass of water, glass of wine, glass of water. It doesn't matter. Match what you're drinking with water because here's what's going to happen. Number one, you're going to drink way less because you'll be pissing left and right. So you're going to unconsciously drink less because you're matching your liquid with water. Um, Also, uh, you're not going to get fucked up quite as much. Because you're you're uh, because you're not drinking as much, but because of the water and stuff like that, so you're not going to get hungover as bad, and you're going to end up not drinking as much, which means your inhibitions are going to stay a little bit better. Because we know when inhibitions go south, um, ta- having a binge fest at Taco Bell sounds really really good after a night of drinking. So um, I can attest to that. So um, that's my number two for drinks: is match one drink with one to, with one to two waters, and you'll be good. Okay, number three, drink addition. Use the uh, use the other strategies, like I said, in the eating out um, portion of this for navigating food with drinking. Because here's the thing: is very rarely is it just drinks. It's usually always food with drinks. So, um, and that's where a lot of people go south. It's not necessarily the one or two drinks. It's it's the bar food that goes with it, where they're you know 300 calorie, 500 calorie evening turn into a 3,000 calorie evening. So, number three is use the tactics I showed you in the drink section of this. Okay, and number four, this is a big one: um, have a meal planned a meal planned and ready to go for you when you get back from drinking. Cause here's the thing. A lot of people, when it comes to alcohol and fat loss, the issue isn't always the alcohol. The issue is what they do to food after they're drunk. <laughs> so, um, for me back in my college days and, and for me back when I used to go out and drinking with my friends, because we all go get drunk or all be drinking quite a bit. Um, I could, man, I could slam food like nobody's business. We'd go next door to a pizza restaurant and I'd have four or five slices of pizza or we come home and all of a sudden the pantry's right there and you just like raid all the cereal and all the crackers and whatever, the ice cream. Or um, one thing I used to do is I I would just kill a Taco Bell. 
we'd, I'd have whoever is driving us just swing through Taco Bell and I'd easily get 3000 calories worth of Taco Bell. But that's the thing is when you've been drinking a lot, it's easy because inhibitions are lowered. It's easy to make really fucked up decisions and end up going off the deep end calorically with food. So one of the easy, easiest ways to do this is if you are going to go drinking tonight, like tonight, before you leave, have a meal ready to go for you when you get home. This could be like a deli meat sandwich and some fruit. This could be um, some Gatorade um, and maybe like some meal that you made or what leftovers from the going out to eat, whatever it may be. But have a meal ready for you because you're not you're going to come home in your drunken stupor and you're not going to feel like making food. And if you don't have food made, you're going to binge on whatever's in your pantry. So number four is have a meal ready to go for you. This way, when you come home, your plan is in place. So um, hopefully that helps with that. Next, home stretch, guys. I know I'm, I know we're like what thirty minutes in, so we're, we'll we'll I'm trying to finish um, and not go too crazy long. Sorry if I'm sniffling. My allergies are still pretty bad. One of my, this is one of my favorite ones to talk about the all season plan, stress and chaos edition. Like we talked about in the beginning of the show, you're, you're going to be hard pressed to have life without stress and chaos. The majority of your life, unfortunately, is going to have a lot of stress and chaos and unprecedented things. And the natural thing we all want to do is crumble into the fetal position and go fuck this and drop whatever we're doing. Oh, I'm going to do this later. Fuck it. Now it's not a good time. It's the worst decision you can make. So um, there is a, a strategy we teach clients that has been the most proven thing that works every single time. So one of the things that we do, because here's the thing, one of the biggest reasons we also um, coach a lot of people during stress and chaotic times is because when left, to, most people when left to their own devices, they regress, they fall off, they sabotage and things get bad. It's one of the biggest reasons people apply for coaching. But one of the, the coping mechanisms and strategies that we teach our clients is what I'm about to share with you. Um, when life gets crazy, when life gets stressful and life gets unprecedented, I want you to do this. Um, I want you to pull on a piece of paper. I want you to draw a T chart. Okay. On the left, I want you to write what's not in my control or put a giant X, what's not in my control. On the right, I want you to either put a check mark or write what is in my control. So right now you have a T chart. On one side, you have a, an X or what's not in my control. On the right, you have a check mark or what is in your control, categorized. Okay. Now, before you make any decisions, like things are going batshit crazy and you're, and, uh, and you're like, oh, I might quit. I might throw in the towel. I don't know what to do. Whatever. You're overwhelmed. Take a step back. We don't make decisions when we're in a heightened emotional state like this. I want you to take inventory. I want you to write down um, everything that is in your control and everything that's not in your control. Okay. So let's say for you, like life is crazy. Work is overtime. Kids are being terrorists and, um, you have all these events and things are just going nuts, work projects, school, doctor visits, kids, soccer practices, whatever. You got a lot on the plate. So I want you to take inventory. What's not in your control? How about the fact that you're not home more than five minutes? How about the fact that you can't control how many calories are in the events that you're, the, 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 the pitch-ins or the, the lunch whatever's that you're going to? How about you can't control the fact that your kids are sick? You can't control the fact that your husband's being an asshole. You can't control the fact that you literally don't have the time of day this week to get a workout in edgewise, okay? Sucks. You're like, oh, I feel hopeless. Well, let's take inventory. What is in your control? You can bring a water bottle with you. You can, whatever. whenever you do eat, you may not know what the calories are in everything, but guess what? You can stop when you're full. You can not say fuck it and start over Monday. You can be back on track ASAP as soon as life is like, as soon as things do open up a little bit, you're not quitting and waiting until life chills out, but you can also not throw a pity party. And so, and then as soon as you have the opportunity, like, okay, things I can, I can do my workout today. I can get a walk in today. I can do part of a workout, even though I can't do a whole workout, right? You can throw a few granola bars or uh, protein bars in your purse. You can make better decisions when you do have the opportunity to. You can still do your inner work and do breathing techniques while you're waiting for your kids at dance um, because you're getting anxious. There are always things in your control. And if you're going, no, Jared, there's not. I, I, I'm telling you, you're lying to yourself. There's not a case you do not have control over at least one or two things. Because the truth is, when life hits you sideways and stress is at an all-time high and chaos isn't at an all-time high, you don't want a lot on the in your control list. You only need one or two things to A, move the needle, and to B, keep you grounded. So this is why whenever life, excuse me, this is why when life hits you sideways and stress and chaos is just rampant, you need to stop just for a second, big deep breath, take inventory over what's in my control and what's not. And then 
what you're going to do is for the things in the not in your control list, big deep breath, you are going to mentally release all of those and give zero bandwidth to them. You cannot control it. It's not on your radar anymore. And then the things that are in your control, you're going to take bold, ruthless action. Because here's the truth. You know what makes stress and chaos even worse is when you're trying to control things you can't control. Like imagine this, imagine it's, this is a different analogy. Imagine it's raining right now in your, uh, in your car windows are down. And instead of putting up your car windows, you're trying to stop the rain. That's the majority, that's literally the equivalent of what most of you, you are doing when stress and chaos hits. You're focusing on all the shit that you cannot control. It would be like me trying to stop the rain. I don't know how close you are with God, but you can't do that. Like you're not stopping the rain. But what can you do? Put your fucking windows up, get an umbrella, put a rain jacket on. It's the same thing here. When stress, chaos, and life hits you in the teeth, priorities may change. Things are going to come up. Things are not going to be perfect. But guess what? You have controllables that can be controlled. But the vast majority of people struggling are hyper fixated on what is not in their control. They're focused on what their friends are doing. They're focused on their problems. They're focusing on their, their shit, like a medical condition or a hormone thing, or the fact that their three-year-old kept them up all night last night, or the fact that their boss is an asshole or politics or the economy or whatever the case is. You can't control that shit. But what can you control? Things like stopping when you're full. Things like taking some deep fucking breaths to chill out. Some things like doing your best. Holy shit. You can always do your best. But saying, fuck it, I'm an all or nothing person is not your best. Doing a part of a workout when you can't get your full workout in, still doing a little bit. 10 minute walk is better than nothing. Doing an at home workout when you don't have time to get to the gym, but doing a quick little five minute circuit, boom. You have no idea what's in your, con you have no idea. Like if you're struggling with this, you have so much in your control. I remember, uh, I wasn't going to tell the story, but it just came to mind. Uh, I won't mention her name. I had a client one time. Um, she had an extremely horrible case of lupus. She was probably one of the most, uh, she was resilient as fuck, but from a physical standpoint, she had probably one of the roughest conditions I've ever seen. She had lupus. So if you know anything about that, it's terrible. Um, and we would have to audit her program on the daily, depending if it was a good lupus day or a bad lupus day. But she was the epitome of what's in my control and what's not. If it was a good lupus day, she might walk around her block. She might go, uh, she might, you know, go to the grocery store. She might like take a couple laps around the house, right? If it was a good lupus day, she's like, oh, it's a good day. I can go do a couple laps around my neighborhood. I can go walk around the block. I can like, you know, go do my errands. If it was a bad lupus day, um, she might just go high five her mailbox. Like all seriousness, her plan was walk outside, go high five her mailbox and come back in. Cause that's all she could do with lupus. Um, cause it was a bad lupus day or if it was a really bad lupus day, she couldn't get off the couch. So if it was a really bad lupus day, all she did, we meditated, had her journal and I had her be really, really diligent over like, um, her, her nutrition. Cause that's all we could control. We couldn't control her physical stuff because lupus was like being terrible, but she could control her nutrition. And guess what? It was ridiculously grounding. And guess what? She made progress. How crazy is that? But I promise you, your situation is nowhere near her situation. Like homegirl literally had lupus and couldn't get off the couch in the most of an exercise she could do is high five her mailbox. I promise you have way more in your control than you realize, but you're choosing to not look at it because once you look at it and go, this is the list in my control, you're now held accountable to that list. Because if you don't do it, guess whose fault that is? It's yours. It's easy to go. Life is stressful. Life is too busy. Life is crazy. I don't have time. And you're giving the ownership over there. So when you take inventory over what's in your control and what's not, you're taking massive amounts of ownership. So if you don't execute, it's your fault. And guess what? That sucks. But that's how we make crazy changes and change our life. So stress and chaos edition is make that T-chart. What's in your control? What's not? Take bold action on what's in your control. Forget what's not. Lather, rinse, repeat. Okay. Next, last one. Last one for the all season plan. All season plan holiday edition. This is always a fun one to talk about. Um, fun fact, one of my favorite times is... Um, uh, to, to take on clients is during the holidays. Literally. I love it when we get clients between like November and December. Cause it's crazy, right? Between like October, Halloween, Thanksgiving and November, Christmas, 
December, New Year's, January, most people lose it. Most people say, fuck it, I'll start over in January. And October, November, December, January, they like fuck off. So that entire, those four months, they just shit the bed. But my favorite is when a client says, all right, let's rock and roll, let's do this. And it's crazy what what happens to that person. Because if you can get your shit together during the holidays, and here's the thing, you can get your shit together during the holidays while still enjoying them. Those are not mutually exclusive. You can have both. Your life will never be the same. So here's how we teach our clients all season plan vibes with the holidays. Um, understand this. Number one, it's called a holiday, not a holiday season. One of the biggest ways people go south is they turn a holiday or a holiday meal into a holly fuck it free for all. Because here's the thing. When it comes to the holidays, if you have a holiday, say a busy week, big family, where you've got like three or four Christmases, or you've got this event and then this event and this event. Treat them all exactly, exactly like what they are, individual meals. The problem is most people will, um, let's, say, let's say it's Thanksgiving season and you have uh, a Thanksgiving dinner at grandma's house on Monday, but then you have Wednesday, your aunt's house, and then Saturday morning you have, uh, I don't know, your other grandma's house. Most people say, fuck it, my week's ruined. No, I see three meals, three meals, because as soon as you go to one and it's over, you're back in business. Okay, so you don't throw out the entire day, week, month, season because you are, have a couple meals that aren't your day to day. Okay, because again, if you're on a plan that doesn't allow for this kind of flexibility, you're on the wrong plan and you need to work with someone like us. So, um, so here's your plan. Here's the best way to approach the holidays. Step one, keep things business as normal up until you walk through the doors of the event. As in, uh, I remember one thing I used to do wrong, I used to struggle with is um, we would, let's say, go to my grandma's house for like a late lunch around 2 p.m. Well, I would say, fuck it. I'm going to go ballistic at grandma's house. I can have whatever I want. I can have a binge fest for breakfast. No, 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 don't do that. Keep things business as normal, which means get your workouts in, get your inner work in, which means keep your nutrition in check. Like I told, we tell clients, use the doorway going into grandma's house as your trigger, right? It's almost like you go to work and you clock in and that's your trigger. And then you, and you're at work and you're in work mode. And then when you leave work, you clock out and you're in, ho and you're in home mode. It's the same thing here. Keep things business as normal until you go to the event. You go to we'll call grandma's house. As soon as you walk in grandma's house's doors, you are now in eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, go back when you're hungry again mode. Okay. And then as soon as you walk back out the doors, boom, you're back to normal business. That's it. So you weren't even off plan. Your plan was just tweaked a little bit. So if you're like, let's say calorie tracking, you're calorie tracking that, you know, like all the way up until you go to the event, everything's normal. You walk in grandma's doors, boom, you're in now, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, go back when you're hungry again, again mode. Then as soon as you're done at grandma's house, you walk back out those doors, you're now back to business. You're, you're not in fuck it. You're not in restriction. You're back to normal, the normal choices you make, the normal plan. That's it. How simple is that? How doable is that? That's the plan for the holidays. How, that's the thing is you don't need this big, crazy, overwhelming plan. You need simplicity, man. You need such something that's so doable and so arguably easy and simple. You don't need complexity. Because here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to say fuck it because you have another event in three days or even that night, right? I know you may have like growing up, I had, I would have like, like so many uh, holidays in the same week. But just because you have an event later that afternoon or in th or the three days, don't say fuck it and screw it for the rest of the week or whatever time period that is. Treat each event like the event that it is. And then as soon as you leave, you're back to business like nothing happened because you weren't off plan. It was part of your plan. That's the thing people don't understand. You going to dinner, you going out to eat, you going out having fun on the weekend, you having some drinks, you having a holiday, you having some stress. You are not off plan. It's part of your plan. You have to be malleable. The problem with transformation with most people is they're living this one married rigid system. And if it's not perfect, they're off plan. They're like, oh, what's the point? Your life is, is meant to be lived malleable. Think about your day to day. Think about your marriage. Think about your kids. Think about your work. You're rolling with punches all day. You have things pop up all the time, but guess what? You adapt. You go, ooh. Can't go this way. What else way can I go? Let's go this way. It's no different with this. 
This is why when people say, oh, I'm an all or nothing person, it's bullshit. You're not an all or nothing person anywhere else in your life. You just pretend like it is, you just pretend like you're one here in weight loss to validate your bad decisions. So stop that shit. So that is it. That is your all season plan. I think I covered just about everything. Um, so we have all season plan. We have the all season mindset we talked about. We have your all season plan going out to eat edition, uh, vacation edition, weekend edition, drinks edition, stress and chaos edition, and holiday edition. Now, to fulfill my promise, um, the only notes I had was off of a very specific resource. So here's the thing. Um, I actually created this, um, an actual PDF called the all season plan. It is a PDF where, because I know this was a lot, this is like what, almost 45 minutes. Um, this is a lot to, to digest, to, to remember. And we got into a lot of stuff. So if you want basically the pocket size version of this, it's, there's no videos in it. It's all just pages. Each page is like, here's the, the all season mindset out to eat edition. Like they're all one, there's single pages. Excuse me. It's a PDF. It's totally free. You can download it straight to your phone. Um, I created it for this reason. So you can have a go-to of like, ah, something's happening. I'm going out to eat. I don't know what to do. You whip this out. So that's, so that's available to you. It's completely for free. I could be honest, I could charge you a lot of money for this, but because um, I just want to help you, uh, I have it completely for free. So if you want it, what you can do is, um, what I'm going to have you do is right now it's actually saved in my, um, in my Facebook group. So what's going to happen is, um, the all season plan is saved in my Facebook group. You go to, if you go to the, uh, uh, it's in there. You can either go to the files tab and it's saved right in there, um, inside fat loss simplified. So if you're listening to this, there's a link below, you can go to my fa- uh, Facebook group called fat loss simplified. Click, click on that request to join. If you're not already part of it, it's totally free to join. And then just go to the files tab and you can download it right then and there. And then, um, you'll be good to go. So this way, um, this way you, you'll always have it. It's like I said, I'm just going to put it in the files tab. That way you can always have it for your, your resources, your go-to. So if you want it, it's there. If not, no big deal. But, um, yeah, that's, I have it all in a PDF pocket size version where you can just grab it and go no videos, no nothing. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope there was a lot of value in it. So before we go, I do have a few things and a little bit of housekeeping. Number one, if this was helpful, please share the episode screenshot it, throw it on your story. Um, if there was a part of this that resonated most with you, um, share about it, send it to a friend that, that struggles with this stuff. Cause that's the thing is if you struggle with this stuff, you know, your friends are so share this with your friends who are struggling that way they don't struggle as well. Cause also remember the better they do, the better you do, because we, um, the more winners we're around, the more we unconsciously win. Okay. Next, uh, be sure and subscribe to the, to the show. We have, we're everywhere right now. So if you're, um, into watching your episodes, go watch this on YouTube. The whole length of this and all my other episodes are on YouTube. If you have not checked out the podcast site, dieting from the inside out.com, um, you, we have all things. The podcast touches is that touches there, including the transcription. So if you like to read over your podcast blog style, we have all episodes transcribed, beautifully done, um, with graphics, with all sorts of cool stuff, um, with show notes, the whole nine yards, uh, with timestamps, everything on the podcast site, dieting from the inside out.com. So you'll want to go check that out. Nonetheless, you just check it out because, um, I'm super happy with it. It's incredible. Um, now if you're listening to this and you're not quite sure where to go or what to do, and you're feeling kind of lost, we have a few options for you. Number one, the best of the best is if you are struggling, uh, you could always, uh, and really want help. You can always apply for coaching the fast, the best and fastest way to fast track your results with the least amount of, uh, of, potholes, so to speak, is learn from someone else's mistake. So this is why we coach. So if you want no pressure, um, this is not a hard pitch or a hard sell, but if you really want to expedite your results with the least amount of mental bandwidth and with the least amount of friction possible, and you're tired of the back and forth and it's just not happening for you. And you've been struggling for a long fucking time apply for coaching. I'll leave a link below where you can schedule a call. That way we can even see if it's the right fit or not. I don't play the hardball game with coaching. We don't accept everyone. Our coaching is not for everyone and you have to qualify to even get in. So if you're into that and you're really ready to take things to the next level and you want to see about working together, then apply below and we'll hop on a call and see if we're a good fit or not. Um, next, if you, let's say you're not quite ready for coaching yet. Let's say you're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know you as much. I want to get to know you more. I don't know if I'm ready for that type of commitment. I totally get it. So I have some other stuff for you. Um, I have a free course. So if you're brand new to this game and you're not quite sure where to get started with even losing weight the right way or what sustainable weight loss even looks like. So you want to go, you'll want to go through my free course. It's called the fat loss checklist. It's a five day email mini course, um, five days. It goes straight through your email. 
and just put a click link below. Tell me the email you want me to send it through and you'll be good to go with that. Okay. And then uh, lastly, if you are alone, if you are struggling because you just feel like you're lone wolf in it, your husband doesn't get it, your kids aren't supportive, your friends are kind of crabs in the bucket, whatever it is, and you just like, fuck, you don't have any support. You don't have anyone encouraging you. You don't really have anywhere you where you can like lean into to get support and get help and get loved on. Um, well, I kind of cultivated a, a special little spot called Fat Loss Simplified, where I told you this, this PDF guide is at. If you're not part of that group, you should join because there's nowhere else um, on the internet like it. And I built it for this very reason. It's completely for free. You don't have to pay a dime to join the group. Um, I put some of the best content that I have, like outside of the podcast into that group. And I put so many other people just like you who have your same struggles and who are winning in that group because so many of your problems will go away if we just get you around the right group of people. So I made that. So this way inside Fat Loss Simplified, you can go there to get loved on, to get support, to get accountability, to get help, to get to get more support and get answers to your questions. And that's there for you. So if that's kind of your cup of tea, go hit the link below. Otherwise, that's it, guys. I really, really appreciate you tuning in. This was a lot of fun. I haven't done a solo episode in a minute. Uh, kept it under an hour, so we're winning. Um, voice is coming back, so everything's good. Um, I appreciate the fuck out of you. Thank you so much for being here. For real, I do not take lightly that you choose to spend your time, energy, and bandwidth, bandwidth with me. The internet's a dope place, so the fact that you're spending it here with me means a ton. Um, otherwise, I'm always here if you need anything. I love you. Be sure to subscribe and leave me a review. I'll talk to you guys next time.